Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mantra Zion United Methodist Church. Hello. Thanks for joining us in worship this morning. My name is Joe Lehman. I am the worship and music director here at Montrose, and we're happy to have you. We are going to start our service this morning by doing some singing, which means you need to stand on up. And uh, our opening song this morning is uh, from the hymnal, number 539, O Spirit of the Living God. Let's sing. O Spirit of the living God, Thou light and fire divine, Descend upon Thy church once more, And make it truly Thine. Fill it with love and joy and power, With righteousness and peace. Till Christ shall dwell in human hearts and sin and sorrow cease. The wind of God with wisdom blow until our minds are free from this of error, clouds of down which bind our. Say hello to your neighbors this morning. Before we sing our next song, let's just take a moment and turn to those cameras mounted in the back of the room. We want to welcome our, our friends who are worshiping with us remotely. We know that you are here with us in this moment, worshiping, and we thank you too for joining us. Now we're going to sing another song about the Spirit. I'll teach you the first line of the verse if this is the new song for you. It sounds like this. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Let's sing that together. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, 
We only want to hear your voice. We're hanging on every... Sing it again. The Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. We only want to know you more and more. We're hanging on every word. Sing the whole verse again. Let's go back one slide. Thanks, Kyle. That whole slide again, one more time. Spirit of the living God. To hear your voice. We're hanging on every word. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. We want to know you. Hanging on every word. And the chorus goes like this. Because when you speak and when you move and when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see and what we seek. And when you come in the room and when you do what only you can do, it changes us. It changes what we see and what we see. You're changing everything. Let's go to verse 2. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, we're leaning into all you are. Everything else can wait. Spirit of the living God, Spirit of the living God, come now and breathe upon our hearts. Come now and have your way. Because when you speak, because when you speak, and when you move, and when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, what we see. And when you come in the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see. You're changing everything. When you move, when you move, you move all our feet. And when you move, you move us to tears. And when you move, you move all our fears. And when you move, you move us to tears. And when you fall, and when you fall, we fall on our knees. And when you fall, we fall at your feet. Cause when you speak, cause when you speak, and when you move, and when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, what we see. And when you come to the room, when you do what only you can do, it changes us, it changes what we see, and what we see. changing everything spirit of the living god spirit of the living god we only want to hear your voice we're hanging on every word Hang on your every word this morning, Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. Thank you, Joe and Praise Team. Good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer Dyer. I'm the Director of Youth and Young Adults here at Matra Zion. It's good to be in worship with you this morning. A couple of announcements for us this morning. This coming Wednesday, uh, we are going to be heading out to do an Open M lunch. 
And we are collecting for the monetary means to provide that lunch. So our funds are a little low. So if you have some extra cash or a check that you'd like to donate towards our Open M lunches, there are envelopes back in the back on clipboards that you can put your money in there and that'll go right towards Open M. So if you'd like to contribute to Open M, that would be great. Please keep those that are going um, to the lunch on Wednesday and those that will see, receive that lunch in your thoughts and prayers. Another reminder about next Sunday is our last Sunday of the month. And so we are continuing to collect shampoo. They need, we need new unused bottles 12 to 19 ounces of shampoo. And we're collecting that for United Methodist Com uh, Committee on Relief, also known, known as UMCOR. And we will be taking those to our annual conference and dropping those off there. And they distribute them to people who have been hit or affected by natural disasters um, all around the world. So it's a great arm of our Methodist connection. If you want to learn more about it, you just Google UMCOR, U-M-C-O-R, and you'll find out all you would like to know about that. Um, and we are going to continue to talk about them next month as well. Just a little heads up there. Um, golf outing uh, flyers are on the welcome table. Oh, boy. Um, so we're, we have our annual golf outing that's coming up. We are currently accepting sign-ups. <laughs> Sorry, she's very distracting. Um, that are there to sign up. All the, the proceeds are going to go to the Ethan Liming Memorial um, Scholarship Fund. So if you'd like to do that, if you are a golfer, um, you know what a golf outing entails, I would assume. <laughs> so. Um, there are sign-ups for that as well. There's also, if you'd like to practice, um, there's also a golf outing next Sunday at 3 p.m. at Mud Run, and you can see Lee Chrisman. Uh, Lee, you want to raise your hand if he's in... I saw his family come in. Oh, they're in the nursery. Okay. All right. You can see Mark. He, he just waved his hand real... sort of. <laughs> But if you're a golfer and would like to sign up for that, to, to practice maybe for the summer golf outing, um, you can do that next Sunday at 3 at Mud Run. There's a sign-up sheet in the back for that as well. A note to all of you who um, are a part of the Eat, Pray, Play or would like to be a part of the Eat, Pray, Play connection group, we're meeting this evening. We're going to have a pasta bar, and we're going to also hear from Joe from South Street Ministries. Um, and we're going to make encouragement cards. The kids and adults are going to make encouragement cards for their ministry. And we're also collecting deodorant. If you'd like to be a part of that, that's going to be from 4.30 to 7. We're going to meet downstairs um, in the classrooms downstairs. We're going to have the pasta bar. And then we're going to have the encouragement cards after that. Um, it is a kid-friendly connection group. So if you're welcome to that speed of craziness, you're welcome to come join us. You don't have to have kids to um, come, but just know that there are a lot of kids there. So um, that will be that. Speaking of kids, our children's ministry is seeking summer help um, to cover children's church during Sunday worship. So if you would like to help, Again, you don't have to have kids in the children's ministry. This is a great way to connect with our, with our little ones um, so that our regular um, children's ministry, she's babbling in my ear and I cannot think two, three things at once. Um, so our regular children's ministry volunteers can have some summer break. Um, so we are looking for um, people to help with that. You can scan the QR code. Um, if you would like to. All of the lessons and the supplies and the youth helper is provided uh, for the children's church. So it is greatly appreciated by many parents to have children's church um, as available during a Sunday morning worship. And that is my last announcement. So let's continue with our worship with a word of scripture. Good morning. 
Our first scripture reading comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 14a and 36 through 41. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brother, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. For those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Um, can I ask for our young people to come forward for the children's moment? Excellent. Good, good, and good. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right, I've got, and Jen, if you want to get the, the handheld all ready to go, perfect. Um, and I'm going to give you this sheet here. Great, you can keep this with uh, you. All right, I want to know, how, if you're going to recognize somebody, how do you recognize them to know that who they are? Yep. You know what, a lot of people, we use our eyes, and when we look at somebody, I've, I often see people's faces I'm in a crowd, I'm like, oh gosh, I know that person. Sometimes I can't remember where I knew them from. But, uh, but yeah, we see people and we can recognize each other's faces. How else do we recognize people? What else do we use? Yep. Because of their voice, that's right. So we use our ears to recognize them. They're very good. Can anybody um, recognize somebody by tasting them? You can? <laughs> I don't know what's going on in that Lehman family, but that's an interesting way to do it. But I'm going to say usually, what about smelling? If you can, uh, uh, smelling. What about smelling? Like if somebody's got a certain perfume or a certain cologne or something like that they wear? Or a certain, yep. I, I can recognize my mom by her perfume. You can recognize your mom by her perfume. That's right. That's like that, that we can do those sorts of things. So we're going to try some things, and uh, just, we need two volunteers. Cal, did you want to say something? By seeing what they like to eat, and you have an idea of what they like to eat. That's right. And uh, what I need is two volunteers that are going to be blindfolded. Okay. Very good. Very good. Actually, we need it from two different families at least. So, so yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. Very good. Okay, I'm going to tie this on here. I think Renee slipped out to go do something. Okay. So I'm going to tie that. Can you see anything? Yeah. You can? Okay, well, I'm going to have to fix that. I, I appreciate your honesty. You can't see anything now. Okay. All you can see is black. Okay. Okay, and Titus, you want to be a volunteer? Okay. Very good. Very good. Oop. Yep, pick up your swordfish. There you go. You got, don't lose your swordfish. And just closing your eyes, that helps too. Okay. But I want you to do is we're going to try to see if you can recognize certain people and to see if you can recognize them by their voice. Okay, can you see anything? You can see something? How about if I do that? Can you see anything, Titus? How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> All right. Have to stay over here, big guy. Stay over here, big guy. Whoops. There we go. There we go. Good. Okay, we're going to have a couple people say some things. Great. And I'm going to see if you can guess who they are. I will be with you always. What's your guess? What's your guess? Who was that? Anybody else? Let's do it again. I will be with you always. Who do you think, Titus? Do you know what her name is? Ah, forget it. <laughs> okay. Okay, how about, how about another person? 
I will always be with you. Anybody having a guess about who that might be? I will be with you always. <laughs> Any guesses about who that is? That's it. <laughs> All right, how about another volunteer real quick? All right, eventually, need somebody else from a different family? We'll be able to read the next one. Okay. Do you want to do it? You don't want to do it? Kale, do you want to put this on real quick? Okay, go ahead and put that baby on real quick. Go ahead and slide that down over your eyes. Very good. All right, I'm going to try one more person to see if you guys can guess um, who this might be. I will always be with you. Okay, does anybody have a guess about who that is? It's your dad. That's your dad. That's right. Awesome. Nice job. Nice job. Because the thing is, oftentimes we can recognize people by our voices, but when you hear a stranger's voice, it's like, gosh, I don't recognize that voice. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And there were these two disciples who were walking down the road this one day, and um, they were really sad. Um, and guess who they were disciples of? Who do you think they were disciples of? Hey, Max, who do we talk about in church all the time? Man, you got the right answer. They were Jesus' disciples, and they're walking down the road, and after Jesus had been crucified, they were kind of sad. They hadn't seen him after the resurrection. They heard stories about it, but they were really sad. And all of a sudden, this a third person started walking with them, and they didn't recognize who he was. They looked right at him, and their eyes had failed them. They couldn't recognize or see who it was. But suddenly that night when they were having dinner, he started breaking bread and talking to them and poured out wine, and they suddenly discovered that, you know, the person right in front of them, they heard him speaking. Guess who it was? It was Jesus. That's right. He met these two disciples on the road to Emmaus. And, and when he first met them, their hearts were really sad. Their hearts were real sad. And you ever get really sad and you can't see anything good? Do you ever get so sad or having such a bad day you can't see even see something just good that's happening in front of you? I know, adults, do you ever get so sad you can't even see anything good happening around you? Um, it sometimes happens, and that's what the disciples were doing. They were so sad they couldn't even recognize the fact that the person that they loved the most in the world was walking right there beside them. But suddenly when they heard his voice and they saw him break bread, they realized that their long-lost friend, that their, their, their teacher, their savior, was right there with them all along. And that's what I want you to remember also. Even in the days in which you're sad, I want you to know that Jesus is walking with you. And so let's go to prayer, and we're going to pray to God to open our eyes. Okay? All right. Dear Lord, open our eyes that we may see you. Dear Lord, open our ears that we may hear you. Lord, we know in our good days and our bad days, you walk with us. Open our eyes that we can see you. Amen. Okay, fantastic. If you guys would like to head off to Junior Church and great job, volunteers, um, we'll see you a little later. Thanks, Cal. As we continue into this spirit of prayer, um, Jim Imars told me this morning that he tried bocce ball this morning, or th this past week, and he tried that for a new sport for him, right? That's right. This Thursday, he tried bocce ball, so he wanted to make sure that you all knew that he is trying new things, and it's encouragement to me to try new things, Jim, so thank you so much for that joy this morning. Would you please join me in a moment of silent prayer? Lord, in this Easter season, we celebrate the triumph of life over death. You ransomed us from our futility. Our salvation wasn't purchased with gold or silver or with perishable earthly goods, but with the precious blood of your Son, Christ himself. In his resurrection, we are born anew with him. 
born of the immortal, born of the everlasting, born into a living hope. So loving God, come and speak to our hearts today. May we, like those on the Emmaus Road, find your words burning with hope in our lives. Strengthen us and give us courage for the journey ahead. Sometimes our faith life is like a journey in which we have four flat tires, no change for the the highway, and children crying, are we there yet? We just try to get through it. Be with us on these journeys. Bring us comfort and hope. Remind us that we will be okay, that God is walking with us. This week, so many things have happened in our lives. Some of these things have been wonderful and caused our hearts to rejoice. Other things have torn our spirits, seeking to bring us down. So this morning, lift us up, Lord. Open our eyes to you. Help us to see your presence in all your world. Give us courage and strength for all the journeys ahead so that even through the flat tires and fussing children, they will not deter us from our destination. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray all of these things spoken aloud and those said in our hearts. The prayer he taught us saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I'm holding on to faith Cause I know you'll make a way And I don't always understand And I don't always get to see But I will believe it Yes, I will believe it Cause you make mountains move You make giants fall You use songs of praise To shake prison walls And I will speak to my fear And I will preach to my doubt And you were faithful then You're gonna be faithful now I'm standing on your word Calling heaven down to earth And you will fight my enemies And this will end in victory And I will believe it Yes, I believe it Cause you make mountains move You make giants fall You use songs of praise To shake prison walls And I will speak to my fear And I will preach to my doubt That you were faithful then You will be faithful now That you were faithful then You'll be faithful now And I know, yet I know You never fail Oh yes, I know that I know You never will And I know, yes, I know You never fail Oh, I know that I know You never will Cause you make mountains move make giants fall you use songs of praise to shake prison walls and i will speak to my fear and i will preach to my doubt that you were faithful then you're gonna be faithful now then you were faithful then You're going to be faithful now, Lord, you were faithful then. You're going to be faithful The second scripture comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels, who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, 
Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Come on, there you go. Friends, as we get into this sermon today, I want us all to think into the back of our minds, what is it like... um, to experience the loss of something dear to you. And throughout this sermon, what I want you to do is, we're going to talk about several different dimensions of loss today in today's sermon. And what I want you to do is to think about how that applies to the disciples of Christ as they walk down the road to Emmaus. Now, when I was back in seminary in Atlanta, I took all sorts of courses on pastoral care and counseling. Um, not because I'm a particularly caring person, not, at least not back then. And, and honestly, I care a little bit less now. Um, than I used to, um, but, but I, I think I took all of those courses back then because the professor, Dr. Karen Schaub, she was just phenomenal. She was a phenomenal professor. And we learned about all different types of loss um, that we one day will face. And back then, it was like, you know, we read about those losses in a textbook. It was just kind of a textbook sort of thing. Um, and certainly I had lost things in my life at, up to that point, um, but I don't think I truly understood loss back then. Um, loss is no simple thing. In every type of loss, if not addressed, it can become paralyzing and blinding, leaving us with feelings of being isolated and forsaken. So again, as I start outlining some of these different um, aspects of loss that we all experience at some point in our lives, um, I want you to think about how that applies to the disciples walking down the road to Emmaus. The first type of loss I want to bring up is material loss. Um, For instance, we lose something of great value, um, something of great value to us. Um, We lose a physical object or perhaps our link to a place where we once found life. I think all of us have seen a little child come running out of an ice cream place, super excited about their triple scoop ice cream cone, only to watch it go splat in a uh, hot summer sidewalk. And uh, when you see the tears in the eyes of that little child, um, you know they're experiencing a sense of material loss. Another example is uh, when a child's precious toy um, disappears or is lost. Uh, my sister and I, I'm sorry Mary Beth, uh, let this one out of the bag, but uh, what we, uh, when we were little we had the great pleasure of getting head lice. Um, it was a lot of fun. And I used to have this little um, um, elephant that I slept next to every night and, and then a King Kong stuffed animal that I slept to on my other side. Um, and after getting head lice, suddenly those two precious toys disappeared into a big black garbage bag never to return again. And, and for the next couple of weeks, I've got to tell you, I felt the emptiness um, next to me in bed um, of my precious toys not being there. But have you ever known somebody to lose their home to foreclosure? When we lose our homes, friends, that is no small thing. Where are we supposed to go? And I know we as Christians are not supposed to be concerned about the material loss of, of material things of this world. But try losing your house. Um, that is no small thing. Now, the next form of loss I want to bring up is uh, relationship loss. Um, We experience relationship loss when we lose the opportunity to love, to touch, to fight, to argue, to, or simply be in the same place with somebody that really matters most to us. It happens when we move far away from one another. Relationship happens when those relationships that are most dear to us um, become broken. And ultimately, we all know that those, we experience relationship loss with the death of a loved one. 
I remember uh, my cousin's wife died, Alana. She died very early in her early 40s um, of cancer. And at her funeral, I remember my cousin Jimmy reading this uh, love letter that he had written that he had written to her years before. And in that love letter, he loved the fact that Alana used to run her fingers through his hair. He said he felt like the most attractive man on the face of the earth. And when she did that, he felt like he was, um, he was in heaven. But with that relationship loss, you know, you miss out on those opportunities and those things are gone. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, intrapsychic loss. And for those of you who are fans of the sci-fi channel, it is not, it has nothing to do with the sci-fi channel. But intrapsychic loss is when we lose a certain picture of who we are, an image of ourselves, and we realize it will never be. Um, for instance, I've given up on the idea of ever being six foot eight or even hitting six foot in life. Um, and I also have come to terms that most likely I will never quite be as attractive as Brad Pitt. Um, I've given up on those things. But in all seriousness, uh, intrapsychic loss, it, it's the death of a dream. Um, when a couple realizes they cannot have children, they're experiencing intrapsychic loss. When a business venture that is, uh, you've invested everything of yourself into doesn't pan out, you experience intrapsychic loss. Intrapsychic loss can happen at the point of retirement. A good friend of mine served in the church for 32 years and has understood himself to be a minister for those 32 years and had to try to figure out what will life be like upon retirement. His vision of himself was changing. Um, the, last, uh, uh, the last of the, uh, the types of loss I want to talk about this morning is uh, um, a role loss. Very good. We all have certain roles that we all play in our lives, um, whether at church, at home, or out in the community. Um, when parents uh, experience their kids moving out of the house, we call it empty nest syndrome. When moms and dads realize that their little ones uh, no longer are living at home and don't need them quite in the same way that they used to need them. I think it's a goal for all parents to prepare our kids to live independent and healthy lives. But when the kids actually go do that, um, it can be a little bit disorienting. As students after leaving college also experiencing this role loss. Imagine living the first 17 of your 22 years of life being a student, and then you graduate and you figure, what in the world am I supposed to do with myself now? There are no more summer vacations. There are no more, um, and suddenly you have to adjust to an adult work schedule. Now, in all of the losses that we experience, a Buddhist a philosophy might um, tell us that from the moment that we are born, um, that life is all about experiencing the pain of loss. And so how do we deal with that from a Buddhist perspective? Well, the answer is to disconnect, to have no attachments. And if you would have no attachments, then any of those losses will cease to exist, kind of like a candle flame that is eventually snuffed out. Now, I can see a sort of peaceful nature to this way of thinking because loss is painful. It's difficult to deal with. But then I think to myself, well, I'm not Buddhist. And believe me, I know loss is painful, but despite all the losses we face, there are still those redeemable moments that make life so very worthwhile. Holding your child for the very first time um, when they're first born is something that I don't think any of us would ever give up. The very first kiss we receive from the person we love is something we would never give up even though we know the day will come in which we can't hold hands any longer. A brilliant blazing sunset only lasts for a short period of time, but not a single one of us would trade it in for gloomy, cloudy days just because we know the sun will one day set. And the embrace of a long-lost friend is something all of us would treasure. You see, I would never give up any of those moments to simply safeguard myself from the pain of loss. That loss is simply something that all of us will have to deal with. Now let me tell you about two men walking down a road. Their closest friend had just been executed. Days before they, the execution, they had a purpose. They knew exactly who they were supposed to be. They were his disciples. They knew what their role was. But what happens to the, te the student when the teacher is gone? Well, these two men had dreams for themselves and for their entire nation. They had dreams of peace, dreams of prosperity, 
visions of healing. But those dreams were shattered that Friday afternoon when their Savior died on that horrible cross. They had left all that they had behind to follow this man named Jesus. But now that he was gone, they had no place to go. He told them to leave behind their home and their possessions. And they followed. And now they had nothing. They had once thought of themselves as pretty credible people. They had told everybody that Jesus was the Messiah, that Jesus was going to change everything. But now, from their perspective, Jesus was dead. And the crowds laughed at them and pointed at them as they passed by. Yes, Mary and the other women had witnessed to them about the empty tomb and the vision of the angels. But who could possibly believe them now? Their credibility and their word meant nothing. Now the days with the other disciples were great. They were close friends. They had a community that understood them. They looked out for each other. They had a common purpose. But those days were now gone. The disciples, their friendship and their relationships was, was scattering and disintegrating. And Judas, their friend, yes, he betrayed. He was a traitor. But he was still their friend. And he had gone and hanged himself on that horrible tree. The lives they had chosen were gone. They had wasted perhaps their lives. And the two disciples, with their heads hanging low, they walked down this road to Emmaus. With all of the losses they had experienced in such a short period of time, it was a miracle itself that they were standing on their own two feet. It was a miracle that they were walking at all. And then this stranger walks up beside them and chooses to go with them for a ways down the road. Friends, I think we all understand that grief can be blinding. Grief can be paralyzing to the point that we miss out on the love and the life that can be right there in front of our faces. We just can't see it. And that evening, that stranger sat down with his disciples, and it wasn't until he began to break bread and communion with them that their eyes were opened and their hearts were healed. Their confession, my Lord and my God. They knew that Christ was right there beside them. And then, once again, Christ disappeared. When Christ communes with his disciples, the memories in their lives come flooding back. They remember the words that he spoke to them. This is my body, which is broken for you. This is my blood poured out for you. In that moment of communion, they remembered every word he had ever spoken to them. Love one another as I have loved you. And there is no greater love than this than to lay down one's life for one's friends. And today you are no longer servants, but I call you my friends. In his words, I am with you always. Those memories rushed over them like a tidal wave and peace began to fill their lives again. Their eyes were open and they stood and they walked free of the grief that gripped them. All that they had lost was left at that communion altar. When we talk about redeemable moments in Scripture, my gosh, for those two disciples on that road to Emmaus, this was their redeemable moment. They gave them their life back again. It made life worthwhile. It gave them purpose. It put them back on track. You see, holy communion with our Lord and Savior, there is no greater gift than Christ can offer to any of us. Communion is God's grace. Communion is God's love seeking us out along the road. And Christ, in the act of communion, in the act of giving himself for us, took all of, took all of our sorrows with him upon the cross. Christ took all of the sin that we experience in this world, and he swallowed all of it, even though it made him gag. He consumed our hatred. He consumed our jealousy. And in exchange, he gave to us the greatest love that this world will ever experience. For us, he laid his body down. He put himself on the cross, but then also walked boldly free from a tomb of grief that bound him. Friends, Christ wants to be a living part of who we are. Christ wants to be that part of life that we will never lose. And as Christ's church, partaking of his body and his blood, will we will be forever connected and united to one another and to our Lord and Savior because we take Christ's direct grace directly within us. And it will be with us always. 
And in this act of communion, in this act of grace, we know that Christ lives. Friends, Christ will meet us on the side of whatever road um, that we're walking down. Whatever it is that we experience, Christ will be there right beside us. When we hold our loved one in our arms, as our bodies grow old, when a child dies, Christ is there. Should we lose our home and have nowhere to turn, Christ will be there. When our dreams are dashed upon the rocks and Christ says, I will go with you down that road, you're not going alone. And when we've lost our place in the world and our bodies rebel against us, there is still one thing this world will never be able to strip away from us. Though all else is gone, we remember Christ's words. I will be with you always. Loss in life, it can be full of pain. We all experience it. But as for me, I do find comfort knowing that there are people like you who choose to enter into somebody else's loss and walk beside them down that road. And I find hope again, knowing our Savior will always find us on that road to Emmaus, wherever it is that we travel. Amen. Friends, will you please stand for our closing hymn. Casting out fear and Even when I'm caught In the middle Of the storms of this life I won't turn back I know you are near And I will fear no evil For my God is with me And if my God is shall I fear whom then shall I fear oh no you never let go through the calm and through the storm oh no you never let go in every high and every low oh no you never let go Lord you never let go of me I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. A glorious light beyond all compare. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, we live to know you here on the earth. And I will fear, and I will fear no evil. coming for the heart that holds on and there will be an end to these troubles but until that day comes still I will praise you still I will praise you I can 
see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. And there will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I will praise you. Oh no, you never let go through the calm and through the storm. I uh, love that lyric, I will fear no evil because I know that God is with me. And friends, all of us experience loss and when we walk down that road like those disciples, it can be blinding. Loss and grief can become blinding. And I've got to tell you, be thankful for the people who walk beside you. Because sometimes they are your eyes, they are your ears. And God has brought them into your life to walk beside you down that road. And just know that Savior, even though we can't always feel Christ's presence beside us, Christ is with us in every road that we travel. Go in peace, and may God's richest blessings be with you now and forevermore. Amen. I can see a light that is coming for the heart that holds on. There will be an end to these troubles, but until that day comes, still I will praise you. Still I Never let